Sponsoring today's video, we have GBG Mall. Now with their new Black Friday promotion, where you can use my SKG discount code and get 30% off, making your Windows 10 Pro only $13. After getting the key, you'll have it in your profile, and all you need to do is go to your Windows settings, and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, Ashit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So before anything, I really hope you had a um, Merry Christmas. Um, I do hope that everything went well with Christmas or if you believe in anything else, just really, I really hope you had some really good days, okay? Because that's the point of holidays, it's to kind of enjoy yourself, have a good time with your family and so on. Let's do today the let's debunk the first episode of let's debunk sh some shit. <laughs> Not actually, but that that would be a an actually good good problem. So yeah, let's go to the um, to the news about the new Core i5 12400, i3 12300 and 12100 early review leaks. Of course, this is WCCF tech, and they do tend to... Um, let's say that they do like to be a, a bit hysterical about their news, okay? Uh, like the comment section, it's the same. So, they do say in the end that we have, for example, older Lake quad-core CPUs, um, older Lake quad-cores destroys N3 quad-cores. Okay, this is not false, but let's just say that there are no full Zen 3 quad cores, okay? So the only quad cores that we have are actually APUs that in most scenarios are far from the CPU only counterparts in terms of, uh, in terms of performance, at least in gaming uh, and mostly due, for example, to the lower amount of cache, okay? But we'll get there. Now we have 12400 faster, cooler and more efficient than the 5600X. Okay, I believe uh, in the part of cooler and more efficient, and even that seems a bit off. I don't believe that much, at least in multi-threading ability, that it will be more efficient, but I do believe that it will be at least as fast as the 5600X in some scenarios, okay? Not faster in all scenarios, because, for example, even on the 12600K uh, versus 5600X uh, CPU comparison that I made, that you can watch here, um, you can easily see that the, um, that the 12600K is not faster in all scenarios. It is even slower in some, some rare ones, like for example, I think Ghost Recon Breakpoint or some other games, it's way faster in Far Cry 6. Uh, it's more or less the same in some games. So yeah, I, I don't believe that the, 12, the 12400F with lower clocks um, and less cores will be okay. It's not they. It doesn't have the e cores, but still, with less cores, will be better. But let's continue. So, early performance reviews of the Intel mainstreams and entry level 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs, including the i5 12400, Core i3 12300, and Core i3 12100, have been published over at Chip Bell forums by Enthusiast Citizen. Okay. Let's just say that um, it all comes to price also. So if the 12400 is actually way better in price, which will be, of course, if the 12400 pulls something like, like a, let's say, $220, $220 price tag, then the 5600X will become obsolete, okay? Because with the B660 motherboards and the 12400F at $220, it will the, the 5600X will be obsolete, okay? Nobody will buy that shit at $300, okay? Just, it's even a hard buy. If you're building a new computer, just go with the 12600K instead of the, of the 5600X because it is not worth in terms of price performance anymore, okay? Okay, we have more news, blah, 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 blah. Also, in terms of the i3, uh, let's go to the charts first, because in terms of the i3, I do believe they are obviously faster, because the last CPU i3 that we have is actually the 3300X, okay? Which has four cores, eight threads, and it is Zen 2, and the Zen 3 CPUs, once again, are just APUs. So let's look at the Cinebench, for example. Let's open it. Um, okay, it can't go... I'll just save the picture, I guess. For Cinebench, for example, we have 
uh, Cinnabon Char 20. We have the 12 300 uh, with uh, 33 34 points. We have the 12 100, which is um, a lower clocked version of the 12 300, I assume, with a bit less points, both in single and multi threading. And then we have the 5350G uh, with, yeah, a bit below, but I mean, it's kind of normal. I mean, the 3100 should be should be way slower than this chip, okay? It is, for example, in, ther in terms of single-threaded performance. Um, but yeah, basically because it is an APU, it has way less cache. And it still outperforms the, um, the 3100 by a lot because the 3100 is basically Zen 2, okay? It is Zen 2. Uh, so yeah. So the next ones that we have is are actually, once again, the Cinebench R20. Let's just do... Uh, Okay, uh, Cinebench R20, and we have, for example, the 12600K with way more than the 12400K, so this clearly indicates that the, um, the 12400 will be a 6-course, 12-threaded CPU instead of the 10-course, 16-thread CPU, which is not very normal because we usually have the, the 400 parts and the 600 parts with the same amount of cores and threads, we just, while the, the, the 400 parts are, usual, are usually just locked chips that can't be overclocked, at least uh, in terms of ratio. And basically that's it. So this time we actually have less cores on the 400 series, on the 400 parts, okay? And then we have the 5600X with PBO. And on the Cinebench R20 we have 570, okay? Single core performance, which seems a bit... Odd, because let me just show you the stock results which contain, for example, PBO, uh, which contains PBO off, okay? Oh my bad. As you can see, even my poorest score, my worst score on the Cinebench stock, with um, on the Cinebench uh, R20 with the 5600 stock is 597 points, okay? Five. 197 points, while this somehow with the 5600X PBO only shows 570, okay? It still wouldn't out outperform the 12400 in terms of single thread performance, of course, but, I mean, the results are a bit meh. So they have more multi-threaded performance than I have, but lower single threaded performance. Strange. As we go, for example, into PBO, let me just show you... Okay, Cinebench, Maxio, RAM and everything. We get actually 613 points, okay, with the 5600X and a bit more than he had, so he had 45, 30 points and we had 4,696 points, getting really closer to the, to the 12400 shots, that the 12400 uh, points that they show here, okay? And in terms of single threaded, yes, we're a bit below, but way, way closer than they show here with PBO, okay? So, yeah, it's strange. I mean, the 5600X should perform way better than the 5600G in terms of single threaded performance. Even more with Curve Optimizer or PBO, okay? So, yeah. So, let's go to the next ones where we have, the, once again, Cinebench R23. And we have, once again, the 5350G being outperformed completely by the i3 chips. Because uh, the, 50, the 5350G has way less cache, like I told you before. It's an APU, not a full CPU per se. So it has some drawbacks. And it, I mean, it is way faster than the 3100. But even comparing, for example, the, um, the, t the, the 10 1000 f which is a really low-end chip, it was already way faster than the 3100 in games, okay? And it was cheaper. So it was the way to go before, and I assume that the 121000 will also be, or the 121000F, uh, will also be the way to go in terms of low-specs gaming, okay? If it, if it costs like 100 bucks, 120 bucks, it will be the way to go. And it will make... Both these CPUs, the 50, the 5350G and the 3100, completely useless, okay? So, yeah, Intel has been winning in the low-end parts for a lot of time, since their 10th generation, okay? 
uh, AMD just can't compete because they don't release. They have so much good yields that they don't release lower end, lower end CPUs. I don't know why. They are just losing market. Okay. Um, let's go to the Cinevench R23, but now with uh, the bigger boys. And yeah, once again we have way more multi-threading with 17 17721 points with a 12600k that has 10 cores and 16 threads so that's normal and the lower and cheap the 12400 is actually just a bit faster than the 5600x PBO okay just a bit faster let me just compare my results so let's see the Cinebench R23 Okay, for the R23, let me just zoom in. I actually have, phew, I actually have way better results. So they have like 1466, so 1466 points, while I have over 100 points of what they have. And even on the multi-threaded part, I do have a lot more points than they have. I have 400 more points. So the difference is quite big. So this all to tell you that not everything that that the internet shows is real, of course. So, and their results are a bit messy for a 5600x PPO. Okay, you can get way way more out of your 5600 5600x uh, while your 12400k will be locked. Okay, but still, <coughs> for let's say. 200, bu uh, 200 bucks at max, it will completely destroy the 5600X, okay? Nobody will buy the 5600X while you can get the 12400. Uh, it just won't happen unless you have the motherboard already, okay? So, and I think that's basically it. We have 3D Mark times Pi. Once again, we have better results for the CPU part with the i3 chips. Nothing new, okay? The i3 chips are will be the kings in terms of low spec gaming. Okay, once again, the 12600K way better. Nothing new. 3D X, 3D Mark times by Extreme. Extreme once again. CPU profile. Okay, CPU Z, another useless benchmark more or less. Okay, and yeah, basically all we have for now is synth synthetic benchmarks, uh, which aren't a thing that I like to discuss because. Synthetic benchmarks have been deceiving us for a lot of time. A lot of time, actually. They have been deceiving us, for example, with the FX8000 series, where they should actually be better than the, the um, let's say, the Core i5-4000 series or the 3000 series, and they weren't, okay? The same applies for GPUs where, for example, the Vega cards were just showing way better performance in... in... In this, type, in this type of, of benchmarks and synthetic benchmarks and it just just isn't real, okay? It just, isn't, it just doesn't translate to real-world performance. But I do believe that the i3 chips will be way, way faster than the Ryzen 3 chips. And the 12400... Yeah, the 12400F will be at least... At least side-by-side um, -side with the 5600X while costing way less, so... It is a no-brainer for people wanting to build uh, a mid-range system, okay? Now, we also have some... Let me just... Yeah. We also have some... Some photos on the new Intel cooler. And... It does look... At least, it does look better. We can, we can say that. It does look a bit better than the previous ones. But it has, like, plastic fins. It doesn't have metal fins. So, how exactly will this translate in terms of heat dissipation? Because we usually have like aluminum or copper, uh, and now we have plastic. I don't think that the plastic is good at heat dissipation, but I mean, I'm no engineer, and if they did this, it's because it is better, I assume, so yeah. So, uh, the chip looks like a fantastic upgrade from older 4 nanometers platform, and even those who might think running an older Zen platform and want to upgrade to something new. I wouldn't say a fantastic upgrade, because if you have an older platform, you can just put a new chip like the 5600X, and it will still be... Um, it will still cost less. And yeah, basically, that's it. Let's go to the Core i5-12400. 
Oh, now we have the 12400T. So the chip is exactly the same, it seems, but instead... Yeah, instead, it seems to have lower turbo boost, so the T means what exactly? Strange. And it has 18 megabytes of cache, which is pretty nice. Which is really pretty nice. And if it goes into the, let's say, 150 watts, since correct, for example, the 12600K pulls at stock with all cores overclocked, um, with all cores working, it will pull like, from my from my own readings with WAG Info 64, it was pulling like 190 watts, something like that, stock. At gaming, it is very efficient. Yeah, but, yeah, don't say that it is more efficient than the 5600X, because the 5600X will pull, even overclocked, at max, like 120 watts in multi-threading, while this chip will go easily to the 150 watts, so yeah. Um, yeah, now we have lots of comments and people bashing each other. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, guys, basically that's it. Um, there's not much more to say. What I think, basically, what I'm saying all of this is that the 12, the 12400 chips will be the deal, okay? If you want a mid-end PC, you just want to get a B660 motherboard with the 12400F or the 12400T, doesn't matter. You just want to get one of those chips because they are really really good in terms of price performance, if they maintain the prices, of course. Um, the 12600K is still the way to go if you're building a new build, just get, once again, a B660 or a Z690 if you want, DDR4, because it's the best you can get right now, and get the 12600, 12600K and you're good to go. So, for now, just scrap DDR5, because... Yeah, nobody's using DDR5, at least in the mainstream market. It's it's just one or two people. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it's just a few people. It doesn't make any sense, at least for now. The next generation will be the true DDR5 generation, okay? For now, this is just a midterm. AMD needs to release something fast. They will have um, a conference, like, on the 4th of January, so I think they will present the 3DB cache chips. Uh, which will have the same prices as the current chips, and the current chips will be um, will be decreased in terms of um, of prices. So yeah, let's see how that goes. But I still think that low end will be completely Intel for some years more. Okay, interesting to see though. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you in the next video. Let me know in the comment section what you think about these results, these messed up results. Yeah, not that true, but. Overall, believable. See you soon.